Here's a question I've never actually discussed on YouTube. If God told you to kill someone, would you do it? If God told you to kill someone, would you do it? I ask this question not necessarily for its own sake, but as a tool for exploring some of the tenets of Christianity and how Christians approach them. Now, I need to clarify what I mean as I ask this question. First, as is usual for this channel, when I say God, I am mostly referring to the God of modern Christianity, a single creator being who is omniscient, omnibenevolent, and perfectly moral. However, if your conception of God is different, I'd still be curious to know your answer. And secondly, when I ask, if God told you to kill someone, would you do it? I don't mean to paint a hypothetical scenario in which we know that God actually exists or actually does not exist. I'm asking this question to people who currently believe that God exists. If God told you to kill someone, would you do it? I suppose the question might be more accurately phrased, if you believed that God told you to kill someone, would you do it? Also, for the sake of making this question more concrete, I would suggest that there are two main ways that a person might come to believe that God is telling them to kill someone. Either directly through divine inspiration, such as a feeling or a voice, or through a story in the Bible that appears to be applicable to their current situation, in which someone kills, or at least tries to kill, someone else, and it was good. Either one of these communication styles, direct or through the Bible, would work for my question, although I would be curious to hear other possibilities. It seems to me that if you're a Christian who believes that God can communicate with people and that he is all-knowing, all-loving, and perfectly moral, then the only answer you could possibly give to the question is, yes, I would kill someone if God told me to. God has perfect knowledge of the situation, God only wants what's best, and obeying God's commands is the moral thing to do. So yes, I would kill someone if God told me to. But in my experience, most Christians answer no, which is strange, because saying no, I would not kill someone if God told me to, would seem to require that they deny one of these fundamental characteristics of God. Either he's not all-knowing, he's not all-loving, he's not perfectly moral, or he can't actually communicate with us. Something about the traditional picture of God would need to be thrown out. So why is it that many modern Christians answer, no, I would not kill someone if God told me to? This question was featured prominently in a debate between the atheist YouTuber Cosmic Skeptic and the Christian apologist Jonathan McLatchy. And it was actually this debate which got me thinking about the question. In this debate, Jonathan was asked roughly this same question. If God asked you to shoot up a primary school, would you do so? And his answer was... Um, I don't actually answer hypothetical questions of that nature, and there's a reason for that, because I don't believe that that is consistent with God's character, so I don't believe that in principle God would ask me to do that, so I don't answer hypothetical questions like that. Now, I can certainly appreciate the idea of not answering a question which is based on a premise you disagree with, if answering the question would implicitly affirm that premise. Apu, will you ever stop selling spoiled meat? No. I mean, yes. I mean, uh-oh. But this does not appear to be one of those questions. If you believe the Bible, then God has commanded people to kill, and there's no indication that he wouldn't do it again. The prime example, of course, being the story of Abraham and Isaac. In fact, oddly enough, it was actually Jonathan who first mentioned this story. But he argued that Abraham's situation was categorically unique, so this example doesn't really speak to anyone today. And this is an answer I've heard from other Christians as well. Would you do it? Right, so there's, there's a biblical precedent for this paradox, which, as you know, is Genesis 22, where Abraham and, um, is instructed by God to take his son uh, Isaac um, and take him to the region of Moriah, <laughs> one of the mountains that he would tell him about, and there sacrifice him as an offering unto the Lord. And uh, Abraham knows that God is has banked the, or, or has placed the promises of, uh, of you know, the, the nation of Israel and the, the, the salvation of the Gentiles on 
this son Isaac. And so it seems very strange that now God's asking him to go and, and kill this son on Mount Moriah. And so, of course, you know the story, they got Mount Moriah, and at the top there, there's a deliverance, there's a ram provided, and there's a great substitution made um, for, for Isaac. And uh, Hebrews makes the point that God, uh, he, Hebrews 11 makes the point that, God, that Abraham believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead, even if he had taken his life, because Abraham trusted that God really had placed the promises of his covenant on Isaac. Um, so um, I, I, I don't think uh, God would ever ask me to do that outside of that, that, fra- that framework. All right, but if that's the case, then surely you would believe something similar if God told you to kill someone, right? Do you not trust God to have a good reason for telling you to shoot up a school? Do you not trust God to have a plan that leads to the best possible outcome, like how Abraham trusted God to have a plan? Surely you should at least try to shoot up a school if God asked you, right? You should at least go through the motions, even if you assume that God is going to intervene at the last minute, right? Furthermore, the idea that God would never ask you to kill someone flies in the face of a very popular position held by many modern Christians, which is the position that God has morally sufficient reasons for doing things, even if we don't understand those reasons. If God's moral reasoning really is beyond our understanding, as it was to Abraham, then how can Jonathan, or any Christian like him, possibly defend the idea that God would never ask him to kill someone or to shoot up a school? How could you possibly know that? In fact, as if to make my point for me, Jonathan himself admits, before and after his mention of the story of Abraham and Isaac, that his understanding of God's justice could be wrong, and that God might one day give him a command which goes against what he, Jonathan, thinks is morally right, and that it is unfair to pass moral judgment on God. I also think, in terms of killing innocent people, I think it's difficult to make moral judgments on, um, on an omniscient being who has access to um, things that can happen in the future as consequences. If your conception of justice is based in God, then you can at least imagine a scenario in which God asks you to do something which goes against what you originally believed to right. be his moral character. Right. You yeah. could be, I mean, you surely must admit that you could be wrong about your conception of, of what justice is and, and what God's goodness really means. And what I'm asking you right. is that if God uh, commanded you to do something which contradicts your understanding of good, but you know must be in line with God's understanding of good, would you do it? So if God could command you to do something which goes against your understanding of God's morality, and if it's unfair to pass moral judgment on God, then there is simply no way for a Christian like Jonathan to escape the possibility of the question. As far as you know, God might command you to shoot up a school tomorrow. So the question remains, would you shoot up a school or murder a particular person if God commanded it. If you are willing to defend God's commands on the basis of his mysterious and superior moral reasons, then why aren't you willing to obey God's commands on the basis of his mysterious and superior moral reasons? You can't have it both ways. And the fact that Jonathan repeatedly refuses to answer the question, despite providing multiple reasons why the answer should be yes, indicates that Jonathan knows that his answer should be yes, but he doesn't want to admit it. So I don't answer hypothetical questions like that. I think, I think a better reason to not answer that question is because whichever way you answer it, it demonstrates something wrong with the position that you're holding. Uh, okay, elaborate on what, why so you say that. If you say that you would, uh, then it demonstrates that a, a religion like Christianity can drive people to do some fairly immoral things, and I doubt that you would say that you would do that. But if you say that you wouldn't, then you claim that there's some kind of moral standard that exists outside of God. It's a different story, though, because, of course, God didn't actually want Abraham to sacrifice his son. He just wanted to show his willingness to do so. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know if you had children. What would you do in his position? Um, So I I don't believe that God, it would be consistent with God's character. Well, let me me put it simply. I'd say no. Mm -hmm. So I I don't answer hypothetical questions of of, of that nature. As an aside, I find this rather insulting because I think we all know that if Jonathan had asked his opponent a similarly poignant hypothetical question about morality, Jonathan would not accept this kind of hand-waving response. 
he would view it as a tacit admission of his opponent's moral failure and logical inconsistency. For example, it's often put to atheists that if morality comes from society, and if Hitler had won World War II, and we were all raised to believe that the Holocaust was morally right, then by your standard, it would be morally right. So isn't that a problem for your atheistic morality? Imagine if my response to this challenge was, I don't answer hypothetical questions like that because I don't think Hitler could have won the war in the first place, so it doesn't make sense for me to answer that kind of question. That's not a response, it's an excuse. It is a tacit admission of defeat, and I think Jonathan knows that he does not have a good answer to the question, if God told you to kill someone, would you do it? Alright, that's all I have to say about this particular debate, so what are some other objections to this question? Would you kill someone if God told you? And why do so many Christians say no? Another reason is that, well, God doesn't need us to do his dirty work. If killing is something that needs to be done, then God should just do it himself. The problem with this answer is that the Bible is full of instances of God commanding people to kill for him, and preach for him, and do all sorts of things for him. God couldn't build a boat, he had to get old man Noah to do it. God couldn't rid the promised land of its inhabitants, he had to get the Israelites to do it. God couldn't even kill Jesus, he had to get the Romans to do it for some reason. It is absolutely false that God wouldn't ask you to do his dirty work. He would, and apparently, he does. So the question remains, would you kill someone if God told you to? Another answer to this question, and perhaps the most common one I've found, is yes, I would kill someone if God told me to, but I would want to be really, really sure that this is actually what God wants for me, and I don't think I will ever have enough assurance to outweigh the risk of being wrong. He said, if God told you to kill someone, would you do it? He didn't say, if you thought God was telling you. Frankly, if somebody asked me if I thought God was telling me, I wouldn't do it, because I wouldn't trust what I thought God was telling me. The thing is, if you don't think that you could ever be sure enough that this is what God wants, then that's a huge problem for your entire religion. If you find it hard to imagine God giving you that level of confidence in his commands, then how can you claim to so easily accept the idea that God gave the people in the Bible this level of confidence? How can you trust that the people in the Bible who claimed revelation from God were actually being told these things? How can you trust that the authors of the Bible were actually being divinely inspired as they wrote? If you are not confident that God's messages could be conveyed with enough clarity and authenticity to outweigh the risk of wrongfully killing just one person, then how can you be so confident that anyone in or writing the Bible was in fact compelled by God? What if Joshua was mistaken? What if King David was mistaken? What if Paul was mistaken? If any of these people were mistaken, and if God wasn't actually speaking to them, that would be a huge problem, way worse than wrongfully killing just one innocent person. If you cannot imagine God conveying a message to you with this level of certainty, then it completely undercuts your entire religion. And so, I repeat the question. If God told you to kill someone, would you do it? God supposedly has a track record of asking for this exact kind of thing, his moral reasoning is said to be beyond our understanding and above our judgment, and he is supposed to be able to communicate with us. So, would you do it? I ask this question not to try and convince Christians to answer yes, but to force them to consider that either they cannot justify the trust they have in the Bible and its authors, or that their stated foundation of morality is not actually how they operate. If you are someone who hesitates to answer this question, if the biblically correct response, yes, is unpalatable, then something is rotten here, and it's not you.